Welcome to Speed Reads. The Meaning of Life Gain Clarity on the Complexities of Life's Meaning Terry Eagleton, The Meaning of Life, A Very Short Introduction Have you ever paused to wonder what life really means? Maybe during a quiet moment this question floated into your mind, leaving you curious and perhaps a bit puzzled. It's a question that seems straightforward but has challenged thinkers for ages. What if the very way we ask about life's meaning shapes our understanding or even obscures it? Well, in this summary, you'll see that life's meaning may not be something we can pin down with a single answer. Instead, it could be tied to the way we use language and the ideas we bring into our conversations. Philosophers like Wittgenstein and Nietzsche have questioned whether meaning is something we uncover or something we create through our thoughts and actions. Before we continue to be sure to subscribe to our channel, your support is greatly appreciated. By thinking about these perspectives, you might find yourself better equipped to approach life's big questions with greater clarity and thoughtfulness. Sound interesting? Let's dig in. How language shapes our search for meaning when we ask about the meaning of life, we're often led to question the nature of the inquiry itself. How language shapes our search for meaning? Is it a real question or could it be a trick of language, something that seems important only because of how our words frame it? This is more than a minor issue. It touches on how we think and how language shapes our view of existence. At first glance, what is the meaning of life might seem as straightforward as asking for the capital of a country. But on closer look, it may be more like asking, what is the flavor of geometry? Some thinkers suggest that this question might be flawed because meaning isn't a physical thing that exists on its own. It's not like a tree or a rock that you can point to. Instead, meaning arises from how we use language. A cloud, for instance, doesn't have meaning by itself. It gains meaning when we talk or think about it. From this perspective, life doesn't come with built-in meaning. We create meaning through our conversations, beliefs, and actions. This idea is intriguing but challenging. It suggests that the search for meaning might be more about how we talk about life rather than finding something deep within life itself. Philosophers like Wittgenstein and Nietzsche have tackled this issue by examining how language might lead us into asking questions that don't really have answers. Wittgenstein, for example, argued that many philosophical problems come from misusing language, causing us to ask questions that don't make sense. He compared some of these questions to asking, where is my envy, as if envy were an object that could be found somewhere in our body. This kind of confusion, Wittgenstein suggested, is what turns certain questions, like those about the meaning of life, into puzzles created by language rather than genuine questions. Nietzsche went even further, arguing that our most basic ideas, like those of separate objects or entities, might just be constructs of language. He believed that language, with its tendency to turn everything into nouns and objects, might make us falsely believe in the existence of large, overarching concepts like God or the self. For Nietzsche, these were illusions brought about by language, and he imagined a future where a different kind of language might help us move beyond these traps. So, as we consider whether what is the meaning of life is a real question or just a linguistic trick, it becomes clear that the act of questioning might matter more than the answers we seek. The way we structure the question and the assumptions behind it tell us a lot about how we see reality and our place in it. This exploration might not bring us closer to a clear meaning of life, but it pushes us to think critically about what we're really asking and whether we're even asking the right questions at all. What do we really mean by life's meaning? What do we really mean by life's meaning? Let's now zoom in even further into the complexities of the question of the meaning of life. While we've just considered how language might distort our search for meaning, we'll now turn to looking at what we mean by the word meaning itself and how it relates to discussing life. 
On one side, meaning can refer to intention, what someone has in mind when they say or do something. On the other, it can signify the inherent significance of something, like how dark clouds might mean rain. These differences in the concept of meaning lead us into even more challenging territory when we try to apply them to life. Think about how we use the word in daily conversations. When someone asks, what did you mean by that? They're trying to understand your intent, what you were thinking. But when we say, those clouds mean rain, there's no intent involved. The clouds aren't conscious. They simply indicate something based on our knowledge of the world. This dual nature of meaning, intended and signified, mirrors the broader struggle in defining life's purpose. Is the meaning of life something we consciously create, or is it something that's simply there, waiting for us to understand? This leads us back to the idea that meaning might be more about the structures we impose through language, rather than something inherently found in life. Just as words gain meaning from their use within a language system, shaped by historical acts of communication, one might argue that life gains meaning through the patterns and structures we observe. If life has a meaning, is it something we impose on it, or does it have an inherent significance that we uncover through our experiences? This question becomes more intricate when we consider that meaning can be both an act and a structure, blending intent with the significance we perceive. For example, when we say, fish, refers to a scaly, aquatic creature, we're acknowledging both the historical use of the word and the intent behind its use in any given moment. But what happens when we apply this to life? If we believe that life's meaning is something we create, does that mean it's just a product of our actions and intentions? Or is there a deeper significance to life that we discover through our experiences and stories? This exploration pushes us to reconsider the very nature of the question. Instead of seeking a fixed, singular meaning, we might embrace the idea that life's meaning is a process, something we construct through our ongoing experiences and reflections. In this sense, life's meaning isn't just an answer, but a narrative that continues to unfold throughout our lives. Embracing Ambiguity in the Search for Meaning now that we've examined how language shapes our ideas about life's meaning, let's shift to the views of some key philosophers. As we explore their thoughts, we might discover that the search for meaning doesn't always lead to clear answers. In fact, some modern and postmodern thinkers argue that meaning might be elusive or even absent. This shift from seeking clear purpose to embracing uncertainty marks a significant change in how we think about existence. Modernism, connected to a time when the world seemed to have a clear narrative, often sees the loss of meaning as a tragedy. Consider Chekhov's Three Sisters, where the question of meaning is met with the observation, look out there, it's snowing, what's the meaning of that? This captures modernist despair. The world, once full of significance, now appears indifferent, as if meaning is drained away, leaving only the cold reality of purposeless snow. The snow symbolizes the greater existential void, representing the loss of universal truths that once guided thought and action. As we move into postmodernism, though, this sense of loss is replaced by acceptance and even a sense of freedom. Postmodern thought doesn't mourn the disappearance of grand narratives. It questions whether they ever truly existed. Where modernists see the elusiveness of meaning as tragic, postmodernists reject the idea that anything real has been lost. Life is no longer viewed as a grand story with a beginning, middle, and end, but as a series of fragmented experiences, none of which need to fit into a single, overarching truth. Consider Beckett's Waiting for Gardo, a work that sits on the line between modernist despair and postmodern ambivalence. The play revolves around characters who wait endlessly for something. Gardo, that never arrives, symbolizing the meaning or resolution that never comes. In Beckett's world, meaning is always just out of reach, never fully realized, 
and this delay becomes the central action or inaction of the play. Yet, this endless waiting isn't entirely without hope. The very ambiguity of the situation leaves room for possibility, however faint. If nothing is certain, then despair isn't certain either. The lack of resolution means that hope, too, remains unresolved and alive. Postmodernism takes this idea further by suggesting that life might not just lack meaning, but that this absence could be what keeps us going. If we aren't bound by the need for ultimate answers, we aren't weighed down by their absence either. Meaning becomes something we create, rather than something we discover. The act of living itself, with all its contradictions and uncertainties, is where meaning lies, not as a fixed truth, but as an ongoing, unfinished process. This view is both freeing and unsettling. It frees us from the burden of needing to find a single purpose, but it also requires us to live with the constant need to interpret and reinterpret. So, while modernism laments the loss of meaning, postmodernism embraces it, finding in this void a space for new interpretations and survival. Letting go of the search for a single meaning. Letting go of the search for a single meaning. Imagine connecting together all the pieces of your life into a single narrative. It's a comforting thought, isn't it? To believe that everything you've been through could fit neatly into a story that reveals life's true meaning. But the truth is, this idea that life can be fully understood as one coherent whole is an illusion. It's a belief that, while soothing, doesn't reflect the messy reality of existence. Life isn't a seamless story. It's more like a collection of different moments, often disjointed and fragmented. The idea that every experience fits together like pieces of a puzzle is appealing but unrealistic. When we look closely, life resembles a collage, with each moment standing on its own. Joy at a wedding can exist alongside grief at a funeral. Love can coexist with loneliness. These experiences don't easily merge into a single narrative. They clash, reflecting the complex nature of being human. As we've seen throughout this summary, various people have tried to impose a grand narrative on life to make sense of everything. Philosophers, religious leaders, and thinkers have all attempted to define what life adds up to. But even the most well-thought-out theories fall short because they can't capture the full range of human experiences. For instance, Marxism offers a broad view of history and society, but it doesn't address personal feelings of love or loss. Religious doctrines may offer a sense of purpose, but they often struggle to encompass the wide range of human emotions and desires. This fragmented reality challenges the idea that life can be distilled into one meaning. Instead of searching for a grand, overarching narrative, perhaps it's better to accept the multiple meanings that life offers. Each moment and experience carries its own significance. Trying to force them into a single story only reduces their richness. So, maybe the quest for a unified meaning in life is misguided. What if, instead of seeking one grand answer, we acknowledge that life's meaning might be found in how we live each moment, in the connections we make, and in the variety of experiences we encounter? Perhaps life's meaning isn't something we discover by seeing the whole picture, but something we create by embracing life's fragmented, often contradictory reality. In this view, life's meaning isn't a puzzle to solve, but an ongoing process of living fully, despite its messiness. The richness of life comes from its diversity, contradictions, and complexity. Instead of searching for a neat narrative, we might find more meaning in the collection of experiences that make up our lives, finding purpose in the very act of living. Final Summary in this speed read to the meaning of life by Terry Eagleton, you've learned that the question of life's meaning may not have a straightforward answer. Instead, it could be more about how we frame and discuss the question itself. 
Philosophers like Wittgenstein and Nietzsche suggest that language often leads us to ask questions without clear answers, pushing us to consider whether meaning is something we create rather than something inherent. The search for life's meaning might not reveal a single truth, but instead highlights the process of living and interpreting our experiences. This exploration invites us to think critically about what we're really asking and whether the question itself is the right one. Okay, that's it for this summary. We hope you enjoyed it. If you can, please take the time to leave us a rating. We always appreciate your feedback. Thanks for listening, and see you in the next Speed Read.